Hey guys, in this video I'm going to review the limited edition Blu-ray DVD combo pack of Sailor Moon Season 1 Part 1. And this isn't the type of thing I normally review. I typically review video games and things of that sort, but I feel like this is important enough to me um, to where I should review it anyway. Um, sort of give you guys my take on a few things about it. Um, first of all, what it comes with. Uh, how it was localized into English because um, as you may or may not know it's been pretty spotty in the past um, as far as Sailor Moon coming to the West and finally what I think about the season itself and maybe even the series so we'll do all that in, a, in that order actually so let's get right to it all right so let's take a look at the blu-ray itself the packaging and see what it comes with so when you open the plastic wrapper you'll see that there's a flap um, that sort of surrounds it, um, this little thing, um, comes right off, so I just keep it because I'm kind of anal about <laughs> that sort of thing. Maybe it's like a leftover collector mentality from video games. Uh, it just sort of advertises, you know, what's on, what it'll include and stuff like that. Um, you know, pretty basic. Um, you don't want to lose it because, like I said, it's pretty flimsy and doesn't attach to it in any way, really. But, uh... Looking at the box set itself, um, I mean, you just see Sailor Moon on the front. Um, pretty decent artwork there. You see your brooch on the back um, with a little design work in the corners. Uh, here you see the, uh, you know, the title, how it'll look on your shelf most likely. Um, I chose the English, um, you know, title. They didn't do like the Japanese, like Bisojo, Senshi, Sailor Moon, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not an expert on that sort of thing but yeah they went with the English um you know sort of logo uh not too much on the uh on these sides um so yeah that's what the the outer shell looks like let's see what it actually comes with so first we have the sorry first we have the blu-ray itself um you know sort of the same type of cover just sitting on the front um, same thing as the flap on the back, I believe, um, it displays the same sort of information. I think it's exactly the same, actually. Um, same thing here. Um, so yeah, nothing special on that front. I do believe they will release this separately, like, you can get this without getting the limited edition box set, but I feel like if you're a Sailor Moon fan, you probably want the limited edition box set, so maybe I'd get it soon, um, before it goes out of print. I'm not really sure how Viz Media, the um, sort of the localizing company um, or dubbing company or what have you, how they handle limited edition. So I don't know how, how actual, you know, limited of a release this is, but I don't know. I just got it now um, just in case. But anyway, so this comes with um, us season one, part one, which is the first 23 episodes of the series in both Blu-ray and DVD format. And... I haven't actually tried the DVDs because that's kind of an irrelevant format to me, you know, these days. Um, does come with the Blu-rays, as I said, um, which I'll get into in a bit, actually. But uh, before I get into that, let's go over the rest of the contents that uh, come with the box set. So here we have um, an 88-page booklet. Um, basically what it is is um, it goes over, it's like an episode summary. This is pretty much what um, DVDs used to come with. Um, you know, back in the heyday of DVDs, they would sort of, you know, go over what every episode contained and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. Um, but in addition to that, it also has... Uh, well, let's see what this is. All right, that's just an advertisement for part two, I believe. Um, this comes with other stuff. Um, it comes with, like, character portraits, you know, who the... It, you know, explains who the characters are and stuff like that. Here's uh, Zoicide. Uh, you know, Lena and Artemis. Yeah, stuff like that. Also has some cool artwork in the back. So, yeah, I'm not going to go over all of it because, you know, that'd be kind of unfair to uh, Viz if I just, you know, page by page went over everything. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Neat to have. A little, you know, extra. And uh, the final thing is just, um, just like a blank panel that, uh, let me see if I can, this camera can pick up what it says. The Sailor Moon Season 1 Part 2 goes here. So it's very direct with what it is. Um, so basically this uh, box set is sort of like a half complete uh, Season 1 box set. It only comes with the first part. And uh, the second part's coming in February. Um, 
And once the second part comes out, um, you can put it in the box set instead of this little panel thing. So, so yeah, um, I guess they're forced to do that. I mean, I'm not much of an anime person. I've only probably watched like five animes total in my life. Um, and also the, some of the Studio Ghibli movies. So I'm not an expert, but from what I do understand about just knowing a decent amount of, you know, Japanese culture or whatever is that, uh, you know, anime, you know, DVD and Blu-ray prices are really, really high. So the reason why they split into two is because, um, basically, I guess to protect the price of the Blu-rays because, uh, they don't want, you know, Japanese people to import cheap Blu-rays and DVDs here. So unfortunately they have to keep the prices high everywhere, you know, so that's kind of unfortunate, but, um, whatever, um. You have to sort of, if you're an anime fan, you're probably used to this kind of, you know, treatment. All right, let's talk about the Blu-ray itself and how Viz Media uh, localized and dubbed uh, the series, uh, the picture quality, the audio quality, what features they decided to include, all that good stuff. And just to compare, that uh, a company called ADV Films in 2003 released, uh, uh, you know, season box sets of Sailor Moon, um, uncut, you know, the Japanese versions. I had the first season, but uh, they were too expensive, so I didn't go beyond that. But And to be honest, they were terrible. <laughs> um, you know, the audio and video quality were just awful. You know, the, the video was really grainy, and the coloring was off. And, you know, the audio sounded like it was coming from a tin can, especially um, in the opening and credit um, sequences. Um, and, you know, they were just really bad. The menus felt like they came from a, you know, a Chinese pirated Sailor Moon box set. Um, so, fortunately, the Viz box set, uh, in my opinion, is much, much improved. That's a low bar, but I'm actually very impressed with the Blu-ray overall. So, for starters, the Blu-ray includes the original uncut Japanese audio with subtitles. I mean, you'd expect that these days. It also comes with a brand new dub, um, which is very important. I'll get to that in a second. So basically the original dub came from Deke, um, the hilariously and unfortunately titled Deke, at least if you were eight years old. Um, their dub was really controversial, um, maybe not at the time because, you know, to be honest, a lot of people who watched Sailor Moon back then, myself included, were really young, so they didn't know any better. But uh, they made a lot of changes to the series. Uh, first of all, they cut um, several episodes. They um, the, the voice choices weren't incredible. Um, they cut specific scenes out of the show that were maybe a little too risque, um, for five-year-olds, I guess. Um, and more importantly, in my opinion, the biggest sort of, you know, tragedy was that they changed genders and, uh, relationship types, um, of certain characters, um, who were gay in the original series. Um, so for example, Zoisite was a, was like a, a gay male in the, um, you know, the original Japanese version, but... They literally changed his gender to um, to female, which is funny because in the dub I actually really liked her uh, uh, her character and voice actress, but um, that was still a shame nonetheless. And I guess more importantly, um, they changed the relationship of Sailor uh, Uranus or and uh, Neptune in a uh, Sailor Moon S um, to where in the Japanese version they were they were gay, and uh, in the dub they were cousins or something. It was really stupid, but. So yeah, um, there there needs to be a brand new dub. Um, you know, dubs are always controversial. I mean, you know, you either love them or hate them. In this, I have actually quite liked the dub. Um, some of the voices are questionable. For example, one problem I had while watching this is that Sailor Moon, um, you know, Usagi, um, Luna, and um, Mercury... They all kind of sound the same to me, or at least they did at first. They sort of have like just like a plain American accent, and uh, whereas in the Deke version, I mean, as crappy as that dub was, um, every character on the show had really distinct voices, so you could easily tell them apart. But in this, I mean, if a character speaks off screen, I'm like, wait, who is that? Who's talking? But um, but yeah, that's that's a little bit of a problem. But overall, I really like the dub. Mainly because, um, you know, as you, you know, as you grow older, you, um, you realize that while subs are, you know, pretty much better all the time with a few, you know, glaring exceptions, 
they require a lot of attention from the viewer, um, from English speaking viewers, because you have to look at the screen at all times and you have to read the text. Otherwise, you, you, I mean, you don't know what's going on. Whereas with a dub, you can sort of look away for a little bit. You can do other things and you can still sort of absorb the plot because they're speaking in a language you understand. I mean, I'm not saying anything you probably already don't know, but it's like a realization you have, you know, when you, when you, when you watch a dub, but, um, so that's why I really like it. And with the dub, they didn't cut out anything. It's just an audio track. So everything is left intact. They're very faithful to the Japanese version. I mean, they even use, you know, like how in the Deke version, it was like one of Sailor Moon's attacks were Moon Tiara action or magic. And then in this, it's Moon Tiara action. Like it wasn't the Japanese version. They use all the Japanese names. So her name isn't Serena anymore. It's Usagi, which was her Japanese name. They even go as far as to to uh, keep the Ami um, name from Sailor Mercury. I mean, even I think it could have been Amy, and that would have been fine. But they, they I mean, they still stick with a Ami. And they, even with Jedite from the Deke version, they call him Jadeite. I mean, it's not even a big difference. So they could have just kept a Jedite, in my opinion. But uh, the only change I could think of is that they call Tuxedo Kamen Tuxedo Masks, which is fine with me. But I really like the authenticity of the uh, of the dub. They kept the Japanese music, which is far superior to the Deke version, in my opinion. Um, they keep the Japanese opening and uh, credit sequences, which are finally <laughs> listenable now that they're not on the ADV DVD collection. Um, they've been rescued. Um, so, yeah, I'm really impressed with the dub. Uh, voices could have been better, but hey... Um, you know, like I said, when you grow older, you learn to appreciate a good dub more, or at least a watchable one. Um, the visual quality, I sort of said this in the ADV comparison um, segment, but I I think it's much better. Um, it's a lot cleaner. It's not grainy anymore. The colors look great. It's still in 4.3, which some people might not like, but um, it's a really old show. It's over 20 years old, I believe, so you kind of have to deal with 4.3 um, when you're Unless you really want an ugly, you know, stretched out version. Although they could have remastered it. I don't really know what their budget was. But I'm fine with 4.3. It looks good in my opinion. Uh, no complaints there. No complaints with the audio. Though I did experience um, two or three hitches while I was watching um, the complete, you know, Blu-ray set. Um, they happened in uh, three different spots. I don't know if it was the Blu-ray player or the Blu-ray itself. I looked online and didn't see anything, so I assume it's the Blu-ray player. So I'll have to try it on, the, on another player sometime. But other than those hitches, uh, everything was very flawless for me. Very impressed with the dub and the video performance quality. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Oh yeah, okay, so the features, kind of light on features. There may be like a handful of features. It has a little gallery where you can look at still images of the artwork of the show. That's all right, I guess. Uh, nothing a Google image search couldn't do um, to be very cynical. Um, but the features, um, they're actually really cool. Uh, one video was uh, was um, was of them announcing that Sailor Moon was back, that they would be releasing this Blu-ray set, and uh, that Sailor Moon Crystal was coming out. It was really cool because like, it was at an expo, one of the anime expos, and the... Uh, the fans there were, they went crazy because they didn't know it was going to be announced. It was really cool. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I like to see. Um, then there's a, there's a feature where they talk to the new voice actresses and actors. Um, that's, that's all right. Um, you know, stuff like that. There aren't too many like amazing features. I, I would have really liked it if they, they interviewed the creator of the series because I haven't really heard that much from her and she's kind of mysterious to me and I've always sort of appreciated her from afar but i don't know that much about her so that would have been nice but um but yeah uh all right so i'm recording this a day after i recorded the rest of the video because i wanted to do some extra research on the audio and visual quality of the uh blu-ray box set because i am not an expert on that field so you know i can't really tell myself uh, and apparently there's some controversy online about the audio and visual quality um of the set because uh, apparently on the Blu-rays, um, there's some ghosting, and uh, it also has on the dub um, some digital noise reduction, um, which annoys some people. Apparently, 
the uh, original uh, subtitled version is fine. Um, and there's some other, um, well, depending on how you know anal you are about that stuff, sort of minor or maybe even major uh, video issues. Uh, personally, uh, I know this is going to upset some people, but I thought it was fine for the most part. Uh, even so, it's still a lot better than the ADV adaptation. That's not saying a lot, but um, that's pretty much all I know because, um, you know, that version is what I saw. And uh, the online, uh, you know, pirated, uh, shall I say, uh, videos uh, were based on the ADV stuff, um, at least when I back when I watched, um, back when there was no license I, and I couldn't give them money. Um, so, uh, so if that was illegal, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, so I didn't know any better when I was watching these. And, you know, compared to the ADV stuff, it was, you know, significantly improved. But apparently there was a 2009 remaster in Japan. Um, and uh, that was far superior to these uh, adapt or this adaptation. Um, I, but I'm not exactly sure on that. Um, again, I'm not an expert on, um, you know, video quality and all that. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a, uh, your mileage may vary kind of thing. If you're sort of a stickler for audio and video quality, then, um, it might piss you off. Uh, for me, that was not an issue. Um, I thought it looked great just because, like I said, I was used to crap. So, um, maybe you should take my words with a grain of salt um so apparently um as far as viz media is concerned they are aware of this issue because a lot of people have complained uh it looks like um part two just based on the way their language has sort of you know based on their language it's gonna stay the same um it's probably of similar quality to this because you know it's only coming out in a couple months and it's you know set in stone but uh it seems like they're aware of these issues and they're gonna try a little bit harder to uh you know get the conversion right on the uh you know the, the later box sets like Sailor Moon R and S and all that um you know they're not really admitting that they did a crappy-ish job on these ones because you know they want to sell box sets but uh you know if you read between the lines you can sort of see that they're like all right we sort of messed up um at least that's what I'm hoping <laughs> they they took away from this um so it is sort of a a bummer that they didn't uh you know you know, at least make it as good as the 2009 conversion, which, again, I haven't seen because, you know, as physical media becomes more and more sort of a, like a niche thing that, like, is sort of drifting away from the mainstream, you know, when you buy a physical product, you want the best possible, you know, conversion of a particular, you know, film or TV show. You want, you know, the definitive version. All right, so now that I went over what's in the Blu-ray set, you know, what's in the Blu-ray disc itself, um, let's go ahead and get into the subjective and, you know, sort of how I feel about the episodes in the season. So before that, I guess I'll, you know, get into the background of how I got into the series. And I feel like everyone has their own story about how they got into Sailor Moon it was before, you know, the anime boom, or I guess it's, you know, kicked off the anime boom. I don't really know the chronology all that well, but so six or seven years old, this was 96 or 97. Um, I think the show was pretty new back then. I think the show came out in 96 here, but, um, so I watched the show with my sister because, you know, back then I did everything she did and, you know, watched everything she did and all that. Uh, I really liked the show. Um, uh, I, I thought it was, you know, different from the other shows I was watching, you know, American Animation, because I feel like even today, um, you know, American Animation doesn't have much. There's no continuity between each episode. I mean, I, I guess Avatar and Legend of Korra, I guess those are more like anime and that they have like an ongoing story. I haven't watched them, but... But yeah, I mean, in general, um, you know, American animation, each episode is self-contained. So I thought it was really cool that that Sailor Moon had like this ongoing narrative. I just it, it felt more adult at the time because like it is weird looking back now. They're, they're only 14 years old. But when you're six or seven years old, I mean, 14 is like, you know, pretty much an adult. So I thought it was really I, I thought it was like almost beyond me. It was like this adultish thing to watch. Um, of course, that. It's not true, especially the dub, which was even more kidified. But you know, it was just cool back then, and um, you know, I liked it. I didn't really think about it too much after that. Um, kind of, you know, never thought about it for I don't know eight, nine years. And then when I was fifteen or sixteen, I uh, I decided that I would uh, give it another shot because I think I saw like an old VHS tape we had, like in a closet. I was like, oh yeah, Sailor Moon. I really like that show, but I never really watched all the episodes. So I um, 
you know, started watching it. I um I read that the Japanese version was better because by then Wikipedia was out. So I uh, lo I looked up a little bit about the show before I started watching again, and yeah, the, they cut out a lot of stuff as I mentioned earlier. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll just uh, watch the Japanese episodes then, and uh, it blew my mind. Um, I, I guess this happens to everyone who watches anime. It was just like this revelatory thing where it was this familiar thing that I knew since I was six or seven years old, but it was so unfamiliar at the same time, you know, it was like the music was different. The music was cooler. It, the characters, they, while they were familiar, they were different as well. It was just, it was more Japanese too, which was really cool just to like get this window into this other culture. And, you know, like I was mentioning earlier, like there are more, you know, homosexual characters, which, you know, in in American TV, even today to some degree, there aren't really many homosexual characters unless they're a punchline, like like Seinfeld or whatever. You know, when they mention something gay, they they would follow it up with, not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> um, you know, basically the 90s equivalent of no homo or whatever, you know. So, and it was really cool to see in Sailor Moon, there were just these gay characters and they just happened to be gay. I mean, it wasn't hilarious or anything. It just, it it was what it was and it was really cool and it just like... I just remember when I was 15 or 16 at the time, I just thinking that was, you know, amazing. Which is what drew me to the to the series, you know. Um, and it's just really hard to explain. I mean, like I said, anime is kind of like a personal thing. Everyone has their own, like, different connection with the, you know, with the medium. Um, and, uh, you know, that was back when Sailor Moon was really in its, in its dead period. Because, you know, Sailor Moon... In a, outside of Japan, the, um, I don't think anyone had the license to the Sailor Moon series, so it wasn't on TV. Um, it wasn't available on DVD because um, I think ADV went out of business or something, so they didn't sell them anymore. No one on the internet talked about it. I I, try, I know that because I tried to find people to talk to the show about it, and I you had to look really hard because I did eventually find some people, but it took a long time. But it, and it's like when I look at other shows like DBZ, which were probably equally as pop popular um you know despite being a show that was made in the 80s um you know they still make like 3,000 games a year on a, you know ps3 and 2 and 4 or whatever um you know they don't really release any more sailor moon video games they did in the 90s um none of which came out in the america um I, I tracked those down while i was in my you know sailor moon you know mini obsession stage uh they're all terrible by the way except i hear the rpg is good which i haven't played unfortunately um but yeah it was weird how Sailor Moon just sort of died despite being so popular and uh, that's why I was really pleasantly surprised um when they announced that uh they're bringing back the series on blu-ray and stuff like that apparently people still like it to some degree so it was nice knowing that but um all right so now that we got all the personal stuff out of the way uh, I guess we can talk about season one um part one um, this is probably the purest season. Um, there's, it's the one most people are familiar with. I think. I think a lot of people fell off after the first season. You know, when they think of Sailor Moon, they probably think of like Queen Barrel and you know that, you know, story arc. So, I imagine this is going to be the best-selling um, set out of all of them, uh, parts one and two. Um, so yeah, um, I'd say it still holds up. It's really. I think one thing that the Deke dub failed to capture back in the day was um, the show's charm. It's really, like, sweet and, like, oddly funny. Like, the character interactions are really funny because um, of, like, Usagi and how clumsy she is. I think it's become sort of a trope lately, but I think they pulled off really well in Sailor Moon. It's it's not over the top, but it's really funny. Um, you know, the music really works well with the characters. Um so and that's why I'm really glad that the dub, the new dub, sort of, it recaptures that. So I don't have to, um, you know, switch to the Japanese dub or er, version. Um, let's see, what else is there to say? Um, I, I wanted to mention something about the dub and the sub. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, one of the criticisms of Sailor Moon, um, as the anime series, is that it has a ton of filler, and that's true. It has an ungodly amount of filler. Because even when I was in that, um, you know, aforementioned Sailor Moon, like, mini obsession stage, it took me, like, a year and a half to finish the series because there's just so much filler. And I was like, all right, I can't watch, like, these five filler episodes in a row. So I had to, like, slowly, slowly get through it. Um, and that's no exception to season one. It does have a, quite a bit of filler. 
Um, which is why it was hard for me to rewatch um, because, you know, the deke dub was insufficient and the sub, you don't really want to rewatch filler, you know? Especially when you have to look at the screen at all times, like I was saying, um, you have to do when you watch a sub. But now that the dub is here, it sort of breathes new life into the series for me because now I can, I can um, set the Blu-ray on autoplay so it plays all the episodes, you know, in you know in, in order. It plays them automatically. You don't have to keep you know changing episodes in the menu. Um, it's all dubbed, so you don't you can just you know chill. You don't have to. 100% you know focus your attention on everything and uh, the filler it's not all bad because you sort of you can sort of enjoy the characters um the characters for the most part are really good I, I this might be controversial but I don't like tuxedo mask because I in general I hate perfect characters and yes he is a perfect character um I don't like them unless you know they're there for a reason you know maybe they're there for you to compare to another character but it's not like that in this tuxedo mask is just a perfect character and so I think he's pretty dumb. Sorry, sorry guys and gals, but um, but yeah, the characters in general are really strong. You like hearing them. You like hear you know, the interactions because they're funny. Like I was saying earlier. So that's why I was say, um, talking about how the dub was uh very beneficial. I guess the last thing I'll say since this video is getting really long for a Blu-ray review, um, I'll just talk about the fact that they did split the season into two box sets and you know what that means um one of the problems i ran into is that um since it only includes the first 23 episodes um it sort of splits in half the uh the story arc between nephrite and naru um usagi's best friend which i feel is a really good arc and really like emotional arc um they split it in half so like <laughs> It's kind of ends on a cliffhanger, so you're like, what the hell? I want to, you know, see how it ends. Even even if you already know how it ends, it's it's kind of a bummer. But admittedly, it's only a temporary problem because, you know, when part two is out, it won't really matter anymore. So it's only a problem for about two more months. But, uh, but yeah, it's still something I was like, oh, man, seriously, guys. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's whatever. Um, and also, um... You know, this set, um, this is before Sailor Jupiter and Sailor Venus join your team, so I can't really comment about how they sound, you know, how their voice actresses sound. Um, like I was saying, um, Usagi, Mercury, and uh, Luna sound the same um, for the most part. And uh, Mars, she's fairly distinct. I mean, she sort of sounds like she did in the Deke dub. Uh, maybe a little bit different, but she's fine. Um, so yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Um, you know, I'd like to go on for a bit longer, um, but uh, I don't think anyone's going to want to watch like a 40-minute <laughs> Sailor Moon, you know, extravaganza. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you're only, you know, watching my videos for video games, I'm sorry if uh, this doesn't, um, you know, fit your taste. But, uh, you know, for those who enjoy the video, uh, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, I hope to release more videos soon. Uh, see you later, guys.